Hey guys, Thundi E here and welcome to another battle vid. Now today we're taking a look at the MacBook Air 15 versus the Asus Swift Edge 16 to find out if there's a Windows laptop that is comparable to what the MacBook Air 15 brings to the table. Now if you join us for the very first time, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and notification icon so you can get notified with more videos like this. And I also want to thank our sponsor of this video, Qualcomm, for what they're doing with Wi-Fi 7. And you're going to find out why it's really important with these laptops. So the MacBook Air 15 launched in June, be using it for a while. Acer is more recent, but what makes them stand apart and what's the difference here? As you know, the MacBook Air 15 is a 15 inch laptop with a display of 15.3 inches, while the Acer is a 16 inch laptop with a 16 inch display. Now, when we look at hardware first on both devices, MacBook has a much cleaner, very simple look. Same thing with the Acer, but the Acer just feels a little bit bigger, which of course is a 16 inch laptop. Build quality, we have all that aluminum build on the MacBook Air, while Acer has the magnesium build, and that is really important when it comes to weight. Now the MacBook Air 15 is a super light laptop. I really enjoy using it at 3.3 pounds. This thing is really nice and comfortable to carry around. But when you take the Acer Swift Edge 16 at 2.73 pounds, it might not seem much, but it's super light. It feels really comfortable to hold. And I think that allows for really great portability. So Acer kind of takes that point there. Now, when it comes to ports for connectivity, you've got two USB Type-C ports with 40 gigabits per second uh, connectivity on the MacBook Air 15, a MagSafe port for charging, but you can also charge with USB-C, as well as also the headphone jack. So four ports in total. Acer has that beat with multiple ports in this device. On the left-hand side, you have two USB Type-C ports with 40 gigabits per second um, connectivity, also for charging as well. You have HDMI 2.1 out, which is great. You also have a USB 3.1. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, you do have micro SD card slots, headphone jack, USB 3.1, and of course, it can contain locks. Now, as we go ahead and open both devices and we check out the displays here, this is where we have some very interesting perspective. Now, before we even get to the displays itself, the pricing of each laptop is quite interesting. The MacBook Air 15 with the configuration I have here, 16 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage, is priced at 1,899. It does start at 1,299, which is the price of the Acer. The Asus Swift Edge 16 is priced at $1,299, and that does come with 16 gigabytes of RAM, a terabyte of storage, and an OLED display. Looking at both displays side by side, we can see the liquid retina display of the MacBook Air 15. Lovely display, but it's an IPS panel, uh, maximum need brightness of 500, while the Asus Swift Edge 16 does have an OLED display, and that has, of course, maximum brightness at 500 nits. Looking at both of them side by side, you can see how Miles Morales has more color detail uh, with the Acer, which is also DCI-P3 100% as well. So you're getting all those colors that you expect. And also you're getting some really good blacks as well because this is an OLED display. So that means when you're playing games or watching dark scenes, you're gonna get those rich blacks in those locations. But that's not saying that the MacBook Air doesn't have a really good display. It definitely does and it looks solid but that's the difference between, of course, IPS and OLED displays. Now, when it comes to keyboards, both of them have really nice keyboards, but I'm going to just say that the MacBook Air keyboard feels much better. The key travel is nice, doesn't feel like you're actually pressing to the keyboard compared to the Acer, which does have nice keys, but it does feel like a little bit you're kind of pressing into the keyboard. The Acer does have numlock uh, keys as well because it's 16 inch, so there's more space for that. And when it comes to trackpads, uh, the MacBook Air 15 also has a better trackpad. Acer does a good job. This is actually a really solid trackpad here, but the MacBook Air just feels a little bit smoother overall. So your next question is, okay, what do we have under the hood and what does that mean for gaming and performance? Now, in terms of processors, we're looking at the M2 for the MacBook Air 15, and then we're looking at the Ryzen 7 7040U with a paired with a Radeon 7080M integrated uh, graphics card. So there's a lot of great performance here. Now, I didn't do any uh, Cinebench benchmark text because we know how that goes, but 
I wanted to see how it performed while gaming for both devices. And to do that, I had to download games here. And that brings us to our sponsor of this video, Qualcomm. Now, the reason I mentioned Qualcomm as being a sponsor and why it's really important is the fact that Qualcomm has a brand new Wi-Fi 7 chipset, uh, which is the Fast Connect 7800, which is can be found in the Asus Swift Edge 16. And what does that bring to the table in comparison? The MacBook Air 15 comes with Wi-Fi 6 uh, with its uh, Wi-Fi chipset, which is nice, but the Asus Swift Edge 16 does have Wi-Fi 7. And what does that mean for you in terms of connectivity and speeds? It means you can get speeds up to 5.8 gigabits per second, especially paired with a Wi-Fi 7 router, uh, which I do have here. This is the Netgear Orbi 7 uh, quad mesh uh, router from Netgear. Now, this is a solid uh, mesh router that gives you a lot of great things, of course, like low latency, uh, speeds up to 27 gigabits per second. Yes, I said that right, 27 gigabits per second. You also have multi-league operation for faster speeds. You have wide the channel bandwidth, and you can connect more devices at the same time. But you're asking, what does that mean for speeds of my device? So, well, look, I've got uh, gigabits per second internet here in my office. Uh, my download speeds are one gig per second in terms of what Optimum says I have. So when I run a speed test on my MacBook Air 15, I am getting 659, which is great, and that is really solid. Uh, but looking at what I'm getting here on the Asus Swift Edge 16, I'm getting 759, so there's 100 more, so I'm getting more throughput out there from it, which is also impressive to see. So I think when you're looking at what Wi-Fi 7 brings to the table and we have more Wi-Fi 7 devices, you're gonna see better speeds, connectivity, all the things you're looking for, especially when downloading those games you need. Now, I wanna give a big shout out to uh, David Kogan. Go check out his video on Wi-Fi 7. He kinda of gives a full breakdown of it. And if you wanna learn out more, use the link in the bio from Qualcomm to find out more about Wi-Fi 7. So I have all those games downloaded and ready to go. And I went ahead and I downloaded games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Resident Evil Village, as well as No Man's Sky, because I can play all those games on both devices. So looking at Shadow of the Tomb Raider first, this is where the MacBook Air really shone. In terms of just benchmarks, it was doing about 48 or 49 with the benchmark tool built in, while the Asus Swift Edge 16 did about 38 frames per second. So huge difference there. When we came to gameplay, we're getting about 49 frames per second with Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the Acer, while we're getting roughly around 38 or so on the uh, Asus Swift Edge. Sometimes it moved up to the 40s, but the average is about 38. Now, when we went to newer games like uh, No Man's Sky, there was also something quite different here. The MacBook Air did a solid 60 frames per second all the way through, while the Acer kind of fluctuated in between 47 to 60 frames per second. So you can tell that this game really had solid performance on the MacBook Air, while though it was solid, you still notice some slowdowns there on the Acer Edge, Edge 16. Now, a new game like Resident Evil Village is where the Acer Edge 16 really shone. And I think also because the graphics card can work with a lot of the different elements through that game. So the MacBook Air was doing around 27 frames per second to around 35, while the Acer was doing up to 55 frames per second, an average of around 47 to 55. So Acer really was able to play a game like Resident Evil Village pretty well uh, and handle that accordingly. So with gaming out of the way, we can see that yes, the Asus Switch Edge can hold its own in gaming, uh, especially with newer games. What about editing? What about editing for people like us who like to edit videos? Well, with the MacBook Air, I was able to scrub through quite easily and also rendering this video, which I had put on the channel earlier, it took about four minutes and 47 seconds. While with the Asus Swift Edge 16, scrubbing through wasn't that smooth, uh, which is something that I personally just blame Adobe because of lack of optimization. But also while rendering the video, it took up twice the amount of time, about nine minutes and 13 seconds, which is something uh, that the MacBook just does well in that department. So. That is something that we do need to take note when we're looking at both devices like this. And then what does that do for battery life? So the MacBook is rated around 18 hours of battery life. I would say probably for my use case, it's about 15, while the Acer is rated around nine to 10 for battery life, and I would say it's comparable there. The difference here is of course, when you're editing video, you're gonna drop battery life more, and that's where the MacBook Air 15 takes the win in that department. But the Acer is still quite capable, but you know that your battery life is going to drop there. 
So before we round up this video, we kind of talked about a bunch of points here. You can see where each device stands, where uh, the MacBook Air is really stored in a lot of things. The Acer has a really great display and also has uh, a lot of gaming prowess. Now, what about the webcam, uh, the microphones built into both devices, as well as also uh, the speakers? Let's take a listen to all of that. This is a quick test of the Asus Swift 16 camera as well as also microphone on the laptop so you can hear and see me clearly. Uh, make up your mind. Let's go ahead and check out the MacBook Air 15. Now here's a sample from the MacBook Air 15 uh, webcam as well as also the microphone and you can clearly see this looks better than what we have with the Asus Swift 16 and also sounds clearer. Okay, so the MacBook Air 15 clearly wins in that department. Uh, the speakers are really crisp and clear while listening to audio compared to the thin, very thin sounding speakers on the Acer Swift Edge 16. When it comes to the cameras as well, even though the Acer has a 1440p camera, the MacBook Air's camera really does well and basically showcases pretty clean, clear image. Plus the microphone is really crisp and clear. Now, as we look at both devices, you can clearly say that, yes, the MacBook Air won this battle, but it's also priced at $1,899, while the Acer is priced at $1,299. And I think the Acer does have some qualities that I do like with the display, with the OLED display. I do like the gaming capabilities of newer games on this device. And I love the fact that it does have Wi-Fi 7 for faster connectivity. One thing to mention about that is when I was actually downloading those games, a game like Resident Evil Village, which is about an 80 gigabyte game, it took five minutes to download, uh, which normally even on my MacBook Air 15 or even my desktop PC, that would take probably around 40 to 45 minutes just downloading it off it. So that shows you what you can get with Wi-Fi 7. So definitely go ahead and find out more about that. And if you wanna pick up any of these two devices, use our links down below in the description. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.